I'm going to read this book. Science of Survival Prediction of Human Behavior by L. Ron Hubbard Dedicated to Diana Hubbard Acknowledgement is made to 50,000 years of thinking men without whose speculation and observations the creation and construction of Dianetics would not have been possible. Anaxagoras, Aristotle, Thomas Paine, Thomas Jefferson, Socrates, ah, okay, I'll read it in the correct order. Anaxagoras, Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, James, Euclid, Lucretius, Roger Bacon, Isaac Newton, Van Leeuwenhoek, Voltaire, Commander Thompson, MC, USN, Count Alfred Kozybski, Thomas Paine, Thomas Jefferson, René Descartes, Clerk Maxwell, that's of course James Clerk Maxwell, Charcot, Herbert Spencer, William James, Francis Bacon, Sigmund Freud, William A. White, and Will Durant. And my instructors in atomic and molecular phenomena, mathematics and the humanities at George Washington University and at Princeton. And I, I'll read the table of contents. I sure will. The goal of Dianetics. Page 6. Introduction, page 16. And then follows book 1, The Dynamics of Behavior. Um, there's something odd with this book, because there are chapters, and then there are also columns. And um, usually one chapter uh, corresponds to one column. So chapter one corresponds to column A and um, chapter 12 corresponds to column J. And um, but there's something strange because uh, chapter 8 and 9 combined correspond to column G. So um, columns must be more indicating one separate topic and sometimes a separate one separate topic may be divided into more than one chapter Hmm. I'm looking to see if there are more instances. Yes, uh, column E consists of chapters 5 and 6, and column G of chapters 8 and 9, but those are the only ones. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'll read the chapters and columns for book one, The Dynamics of Behavior. Chapter one, which is also column one, The Tone Scale, 
And that's on page 19. Chapter 2, column B, Dianetic Evaluation, page 26. Chapter 3, column C, Physiology and Behavior, on page 29. Chapter 4, and column D, Psychiatric Range, page 31. Chapter 5, which is column E, Medical Range, page 31. Chapter 6, which apparently is also part of column E, The Basic Laws of Theta. Uh -huh. And no page for that. No, sorry. Uh, the name of chapter 6 is The Basic Laws of Theta Affinity Reality Communication. And that's on page 36. Chapter 7, that's column F, Emotion, that's on page 42. Chapter 8 and column G, Affinity, on page 45. Chapter 9 and also column G, Communication and Reality, on page 47. Chapter 10, column H, Sonic, on chapter 50. Chapter 11, column I, Visio, chapter, is, sorry, page 54. Chapter 12, column J, Somatics, page 57. Chapter 13, column K, Speech, Talks, Speech, Listens, page 60. Right, that's better. Um, did I read chapter 12, column J, somatics, page 15? Yes, and I read chapter 13 and chapter 14, column L. Subjects handling of written or spoken communication when acting as a relay point on page 63. Chapter 15, column M, reality, agreement in parenthesis, page 65. Chapter 16, column N, Condition of Track and Valences, page 68. Chapter 17, column O, Manifestation of Engrams and Locks, page 72. Chapter 18, column P, Sexual Behavior, Attitude Toward Children. Page 74. Chapter 19, column Q, Command over Environment. Page 78. Chapter 20, column R, Actual Worth to Society Compared to Apparent Worth. Page 81. 20, chapter 21, column S, Ethic Level, page 83. Chapter 22, column T, The Handling of Truth, page 85. Chapter 23, column U, Courage Level, 
page 88. Chapter 24, column V, Ability to Handle Responsibility, page 90. Chapter 25, column W, Persistence on a Given Course, page 93. Twen Chapter 26, column X, Literalness with which statements or remarks are received, page 95. Chapter 27, column Y, Methods used by subject to handle others, page 96. And finally, chapter 28, column Z, Command Value of Action Phrases, page 108. And then, book two, Dianetic Processing. And, um, hmm. The four, first, the five, the first five chapters, they do not have column references, which to me looks like it might be an omission, uh, an error in the publishing or editing process because chapter 6 starts as column AB so it would be natural to consider that perhaps the first five uh, chapters should be accurately uh, column AA but that should be left uh, for someone who can um, check with the original books because this is a um, this is a PDF which is uh, not um, based on um, on copying from a printed book. So, I'll read chapter 1. The Basic Principles of Processing, page 111. Chapter 2 Okay, there's something wrong here. Maybe it will sort itself out, but... Okay, uh, Chapter 2, The Auditor's Code, page 114. Oh, no. There's something wrong here because it says chapter one, the basic principles of processing, page 111. And then there's a blank line. Except that blank line is said to start on page 114. Hmm. Then there's chapter 2, the auditor's code, page 117. Chapter 3, the mechanics of aberration, page 120. Chapter 4, the dynamics of existence, page 125. 
Chapter 5, General Description of Processing, page 128. Chapter 6, and that is referenced as column AB. Present Time, page 134. Chapter 7, A, column AC. Straight Memory, page 141. Chapter 8, column AD. Pleasure Moments, page 150. Chapter 9, column AD. Sorry, column AE. Imaginary Incidents. The Pre-Clear and Auditor as a Group, page 158. Chapter 10, column AF, Locks, page 165. Chapter 11, column AG, Scanning Locks. Page 168. Chapter 12, column AH, Secondary Engrams. Page 174. Chapter 13, column AI, Engrams. Page 183. Chapter 14, column AJ, Chains of Engrams, page 200. Chapter 15, column AK, Circuits, page 202. Chapter 16, AL, column AL, Condition of File Clerk, page 208. Chapter 17, column AM, Hypnotic Level, page 212. Chapter 18, column AN, Level of Mind Alert, page 217. Chapter 19, column AO, Relative and Theta on Ks, page 224. Chapter 20, column AQ, Tone Level of Auditor Necessary to Handle Ks, page 232. Chapter 21, and uh, there's no column reference on that chapter. Oh yes it is, it's just uh, it's just been mislocated. Uh, that must, that is uh, column AR. How to audit the case, page 235. And then appendix, axioms and definitions, page 243 and then there's an insert Hubbard chart of human evaluation and Dianetic processing the goal of Dianetics A world without insanity, without criminals, and without war. This is the goal of Dianetics. For thousands of years, man has struggled forward with his conquest of the material universe 
but he has known almost nothing about his most important weapon, his most valuable possession, the human mind. Despite this obstacle of ignorance, he has made progress, but because of his obstacle, he has accumulated unto himself not only the penalties of madness and disease, but more important, the threat of destruction for all his works, modern war. Dianetics is the science of thought. The word is from the Greek Dianus, no, Dianua, through mind. The scope of Dianetics includes all valid data pertaining to thought. <clears throat> Far simpler than man supposed, the workings of the human mind and knowledge itself became, in Dianetics, a body of knowledge with which any reasonably intelligent individual can work. No civilization can progress to the stability of continuous survival without certain and sure command of knowledge such as that contained in Dianetics. For Dianetics, skillfully used, can do exactly what it claims. It can, in the realm of the individual, prevent or alleviate insanity, neurosis, compulsions, and obsessions, and it can bring about physical well-being, removing the basic cause of some 70% of man's illnesses. It can, in the field of the family, bring about better accord and harmony. It can, in the field of nations or smaller groups, such as those of industry, improve management to a point where these pitifully inadequate ideologies for which men fight and die with such frightening earnestness can be laid aside in favor of a workable technology. Perhaps our present generation is too benighted for a new science. It would be very sad if it were true, for atom bombs are quite destructive to people and to town and might well obliterate whole cultures. Perhaps the vendors of crackpot ideologies and destructive therapies are too rich and too powerful and too selfish to permit a ray of hope upon our generation's stage. Perhaps it will be tomorrow, if tomorrow is let come, before Dianetics is used and widely applied. Dianetics was asked to vindicate itself in 1950. It did, as you will see in the publisher's introduction. This was very tolerant of Dianetics, for no existing ology pertaining to the human mind has ever been validated or has been called upon to validate itself. The entrenched therapies, flatly, do not work. Their results are much the same as those which would have been achieved had no work been done. What sort of a society is this in which we live where pretense is accepted as validity against all opposing facts? Dianetics works. None who have spent any time around the foundation can doubt that. It even works in relatively unskilled hands. Daily it does its miracles. And this is not very strange for Dianetics is root knowledge of human activity. But Dianetics is not a psychotherapy and it is not psychosomatic medicine. Those who want and need these things find Dianetics swiftly efficacious in these fields and so think of it as a psychotherapy. Those whose field it invades 
would love to have it outlawed before their boxes of beautiful snake root oil have been discredited. Preventive Dianetics means more for humanity in the long run than Dianetic processing. Group Dianetics means more for these war-torn war societies than any number of arthritis cures. Dianetics is the basic science of human thought. It embraces human activity and arranges a body of hitherto uncoordinated knowledge. Dianetics has a basic goal, a good goal, a goal which should not be discounted or thrown aside because some quack will lose his income or because some revolutionary will lose his crackpot cause. The goal of Dianetics is a sane world, a world without insanity, without criminals, and without war. If our generations live to write history, let them sadly give a page to those who, in this chaotic and dark age, sought, through personal profit and through hate, to bring a truly humanitarian science down. The goal of Dianetics is sanity. It would be stopped only by the insane. From Funk and Wagnall's New Standard Dictionary, Supplement Number 5, Die a net x noun, a system for the analysis, control, and development of human thought evolved from a set of coordinated axioms which also provide techniques for the treatment of a wide range of mental disorders and organic diseases. Term and doctrines introduced by L. Ron Hubbard, American engineer. Greek, dianoetikos, dia through plus nous, mind. Di a net ik. Adjective. Dianetics is the science of survival. Although it is much simpler than the physical sciences of physics and chemistry, it compares with them in the preciseness of its results. The source of psychosomatic illness and human aberration has been discovered, and in Dianetics, skills exist for the first time with which to resolve them. An understanding of human behavior is made possible by Dianetics. The precision of science is brought by Dianetics into the broad fields of the humanities. It is actually a family of sciences and enlarges the humanities beyond previous understanding. The present volume deals with human evaluation and with Dianetic processing. With it, the behavior of human beings can be estimated and predicted with exactness. Although Dianetics is a broad subject and should never be limited to the field of mental healing, any true science which embraced man's activities could not but touch upon and resolve neurosis, criminality, insanity and psychosomatic illness. Application of the human evaluation chart contained in this volume permits the student to estimate with some exactness the behavior and reactions he can expect from the human beings around him and what can happen to him as a result of association with various persons. Additionally, the use of human evaluation permits the individual to handle and better live with other human beings. Man has known many portions of Dianetics in the past thousands of years, 
but not until now has this data been organized into a body of precision knowledge. Dianetics, as a master's science, embraces psychology, psychometry, psychiatry, psychoanalysis, and any other field of mental healing or evaluation, but goes on, more importantly, to predict human behavior precisely and to delineate the causes of that behavior, to enhance the field of politics and to enlarge all other activities of man. Despite this scope, Dianetics is simple enough to be easily understood by the intelligent layman, and after a study of this volume, many of its lesser techniques can be employed by the layman to better and increase the life potential of individuals with whom he associates. The first law of Dianetics is the dynamic principle of existence. The dynamic principle of existence is survive, exclamation point, or succumb, exclamation point. No activity of living organisms has been found to exist without this principle. It is not meant here that survival should be in terms of barest necessity, since one of the best guarantees of survival is abundance. In Dianetics, survival is understood to be the basic single thrust of life through time and space, energy and matter. Survival is subdivided into eight dynamics. Man does not survive for self alone, nor yet for sex, nor yet for groups, nor yet only for the species of man. Man apparently survives, as do other living organisms, along eight separate channels. These channels are called the dynamics, and these eight represent the eight fundamental urges or drives which motivate conduct. Dynamic one is the urge of the individual to survive as himself. Dynamic 2 is the urge of the individual to survive through his progeny. The second dynamic has two main subdivisions, the sexual act and the creation of children and their rearing. Dynamic 3 is the urge of the individual to survive as a member of a group, whether civil, political, racial or just a number of individuals who compose a group. Dynamic 4 is the urge of the individual to reach the highest survival in terms of mankind and is the urge of mankind to survive as man. Dynamic 5 is the urge to survive as a life organism and embraces all living organisms. Dynamic 6 is the urge to survive as part of the physical universe and includes the survival of the physical universe. Dynamic 7 is the urge toward survival in a spiritual sense. Dynamic 8 is the urge toward survival as a part of or ward of a supreme being. The number 8 laid on its side gives us the symbol for infinity. With these various drives, all the behavior and activities of individuals or groups can be integrated, evaluated and understood. With all of these dynamics in full play in the individual, a high level of sanity and optimum conduct is obtainable. Dianetic processing attempts to give the individual the highest possible potential of survival 
and the happiest possible life. Severely tested and evaluated, Dianetic processing has been found to deliver in the hands of a competent Dianetic practitioner a considerably heightened productivity and happiness to the individual, as will be shown below. Without using hypnotism, drugs, surgery, shock, or other artificial means, Dianetics unblocks the flow of these dynamics and considerably enhances the ability of the individual to act in life and enjoy it. The source of mental disturbance and psychosomatic illness and irrational conduct is one of the basic discoveries of Dianetics. This source remained unknown and unsuspected for thousands of years, although relentlessly sought by the thinkers and philosophers of all ages. That this source is the valid source has been rigorously tested and has been proven beyond a doubt by the best authorities. The source of aberration lies in a hitherto unknown submind which, with its recordings, underlies what man understands to be his conscious and conscious and period. Something seems to be missing there. The concept of the unconscious is re-evaluated in Dianetics by the discovery that the unconscious unconscious is always written in quotes. The unconscious mind is the only mind which is always conscious. This submind is called the reactive mind. A holdover from an earlier step in evolution, the reactive mind is able to command the conscious mind without the individual suspecting he is being so ordered about. Hidden and mysterious impulses, obsessions, delusions, and other unwanted ideas are able to manifest themselves against the conscious mind of the individual without his suspecting what is happening. These compulsions and obsessions and irrationalities greatly reduce an individual's survival potential as well as his energy and physical health. The reactive mind takes any and all of the data which it contains from moments of a physical pain or painful emotion which have been experienced by the individual in the course of life. When an individual is unconscious, which is to say when he is drugged or knocked out by shock, injury or illness, the reactive mind is wide open to receive recordings. Previously it was not known that an individual who was unconscious, right here unconscious is not written in quotes, that an individual who, uh, previously it was not known that an individual who was unconscious could and did record those things which were said and done around him. Uh, I said what I said earlier because in the book Dianetics, the modern science of mental health, which would be the precursor book to the present book. Uh, the word unconscious, I believe, was always written uh, inside quotes. For instance, during an operation while the patient lies on the table under ether, his reactive mind records everything that is said and done around him and records additionally the physical pain and the drugged feeling of the anesthesia. All these perceptions combine together to create 
what is known in Dianetics as an engram. An individual then has an engram for every moment during his entire lifetime when he has been knocked out or severely injured. Everything which occurs in these moments lies dormant in the reactive mind. Further, every moment of great emotional shock where loss occasions near unconsciousness is fully recorded in the reactive mind. These shocks of loss are known as secondaries. For instance, the death of a loved one brings about a state of near unconsciousness, and everything which is said or done around a person in such a state is recorded and becomes compulsive as part of the reactive mind. The reactive mind is composed solely of these experiences. Later on, when an individual is tired or only slightly ill, similar circumstances or voices in his surroundings may re-stimulate one of the engrams or secondaries and so cause him to react according to its commands upon him. This is called Dianetically a lock and is a conscious level irrational reaction. In the reactive mind there exists thus an interior world of force which acts upon the individual. This is aberration and it is caused by what has been done to not or been done to not done by the individual. Right. So this, it is caused by what has been done to, not done by the individual during moments when he was unconscious. The eradication of the content of the reactive mind is made possible, possible by Dianetic processing. One would agree that if the entire physical pain and painful emotion of a lifetime were eradicated from his life, he would be saner and happier. Dianetic processing does just this. Dianetic processing is very simple in its elements. Yes, I have to take a break here.